Hey, everybody. This is Dominic D'Angelo of Ad Free Shows. Today's date is August 15th, but this weekend coming up here in Philadelphia, August 20th, we have the Multiverse 2 coming up for whom the bell tolls. And uh, part of the scramble match this weekend is none other than longtime AEW, not AEW, well, AEW, but Impact Wrestling legend, I will say, Frankie Kazarian. Frankie, thanks for joining me, my brother. Oh, thanks for having me, bro. Appreciate it. Now, I got to ask, starting off, uh, for whom the bell tolls? Um, did you get a bug in Scott Moore's ear about uh, Metallica maybe utilizing that song? Not, not a bad title. Not a bad title. Yeah, I don't think we're uh, I don't think we're ready to uh, to fork over the money for publishing for that song to be actually used for this. But you know what? Just the fact that it's called that uh, that's a win for me, bro. <laughs> right, right. Well, I noticed. I happened to notice that your birthday is very close to James Hetfield, like one day away. Yeah, day um, after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you gotten to meet him or uh, anything like that with Metallica? So no, so I've yeah, I've been lucky enough to meet Kirk Hammett on a couple occasions and Rob Trujillo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, being backstage years ago, two thousand four, and um, uh, I met yeah, I met both those guys and uh, didn't meet James, didn't meet Lars. James was I think he was a little bit under the weather and he rushed past us and. Lars was off doing something else. And um, yeah, and I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't have mark out moments for very, very few people, but yeah. James Hetfield's a guy, I would just like to, you know, just, I would just like to shake his hand and, and chat with the guy. He's one of my heroes, best front man of metal. And yeah, not yet, man, but let's, let's hope someday uh, those paths cross. Hey, you never know. You never know. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. like that. Expect How many concerts of Metallica have you been to? Oh, I think I'm on 19. <laughs> I'm on 19 right now. And I got, the end of this month or coming out to SoFi. So I'm going to throw a couple more onto that. So yeah, that's my band though. You know, that's, I've been ride or die with Metallica since, you know, early nineties. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, I'm a Metallica guy. So what that do you number? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I would say that number is going to continue to grow. Cause I'm going to go to every Metallica concert I can until they stop doing it. Well, I was going to ask, what do you think of the new album? Oh, I love it. I, you know, uh, I think it's their best, uh, I think it's their best record since Rob joined the band. So mm -hmm. that would be since, you know, since 2003, uh, you know, definitely. Uh, I, and I'm a big fan of um, Hardwired and Death Magnetic, but this song, or this album uh, just hits differently. James sounds great. The band, Lars sounds great. This, the band is just on fire, uh, never sounded better. And um, yeah, just top to bottom. It's one of their, you know, one of the best albums they've made. It's unreal. Yeah it's remarkable how like somebody like it, it, it's kind of it reflects you guys in a way, like somebody like you or somebody like a Dustin Rhodes or, you know, a veteran like RVD or anybody like that, like that they're still able to go at this point uh, at a top level to that aspect. Cause like you look you listen to James, he doesn't sound that much different at all, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah. he's on all cylinders, man. He sounds, he sounds better than ever. If you ask me. And, um, and it's like, yeah, I'm a, you know, in, in music and in, in wrestling and sports, I'm a fan of longevity, you know, like it, it's, you know, anyone could get hot for, for a while or, you know, be, you know, have a good two, three, five year run. But like, you know, there's not a lot that can do anything in entertainment on a sustained level, 15, 20, 25, 30, and Metallica could say 40 years. So I'm a big fan of longevity just because I know the, the dedication and anguish and sacrifice it takes. Well, we'll talk about uh, sports here in a second. I want to pick your mind about baseball and stuff, but. Uh... Oh boy. Yes, yeah. but I wanted to ask too uh, the scramble match. Uh, working these kind of matches as a veteran and kind of keeping in the factor of telling a story and making it entertaining for fans. What is something that you kind of learn over the course of time in working these type of matches and and making them engaging for the fans that, that are in attendance and then are watching on television too? Yeah, it's funny because I was talking to Chris Saban, you know, when we, this match was announced, and it's you know we were like you know, God, all these years later, and we're still doing these crazy scramble X division matches. Uh, again, at this point, I look at it as a challenge because, uh, you know, being in there with guys like Bushi and Rich Swan and, you know, Desperado and Mao and Kevin Knight, who I'm a big fan of, and my old friend, Chris Saban, uh, you know, that, that pushes me to up my game. Uh, and, you know, there is real challenge in having these matches, you know, uh, tell a story and not just be a car crash. Uh, but at the same time, be entertaining. Um, uh, look, and I love it. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'll always be a fan of one-on-one -on -one matches. That's I'm just a singles match guy, but I love tag team wrestling and I love 
you know, matches like this because you have so many different styles and you have, you know, veterans like myself and Chris Saban and Rich Swan, and then you have younger guys like Kevin Knight and El Desperado. And uh, so it's just, uh, dare I say, this match will be unique for that evening and it will never happen again. So any fan in attendance is seeing like, you know, at least one special match. Right. Right. Exactly. And the, the dynamic of New Japan being in there and everything is really, really cool. Um, my, so my old editor at WrestleZone, Bill Pritchard, made a note to me about this one. And I thought this was really interesting. So it's going to be 20 years to the day that the X or the ultimate X matches happened. Um, and do you kind of wish that that would be one of the matches in this and that you were participating in? And was it kind of talked about at all, maybe? So uh, a couple months ago, uh, I was I knew the 20 year anniversary was coming up. And so I looked into when the actual date was and it was August 20th. Uh, then I looked at my schedule and I saw, oh, that's Multiverse United and Phil. And I was like, you know, I was like, I know it's not just an impact show, but uh, yeah. So I, you know, I, I did go up to a couple, uh, you know, creative minds in impact. And I went up to Scott himself and just said, you know, not for nothing, you know, uh, I don't know if I want to do a whole lot. Uh, I don't know if I would, maybe I forgot one more ultimate X match in me, but I said, I can't think of a better day to maybe do one than August 20th, 20 years to the day. And, you know, they, 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 they kind of they, like, wow, that's a real good idea. Um, you know, it was all kind of tongue in cheek. Um, you know, maybe if this were an impact standalone show, that might've been something that was feasible. Uh, uh, even sometimes ultimate X matches only work in certain buildings. I don't know mm -hmm. the logistics of that, but uh, yeah, it certainly would have made sense, man. Um, you know, it, it's uh but but alas, that's not happening. But yeah, you know that that match will always have a special place in my heart. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the you know quote unquote gimmick matches that has uh, withstood the test of time, especially a newer one. That's a, a you know a uniquely original concept that Impact Wrestling has that nobody else has. Uh, and I was you know I've been part of a lot of them, and I was part of the very first one. So you know, I'm kind of always going to be tethered to that match. You know, when you talk about my career that's kind of always in the backdrop and I, and I'm extremely proud of that. I, yeah, I could absolutely imagine that. And like, yeah, like it really speaks to the X division itself of like the ultimate X matches. Like it's just peanut butter and jelly in a lot of ways. So it definitely makes like, yeah. you know, it would be cool yeah. to see, but definitely makes sense that, you know, potentially it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And like I said, it's a, you know, the, 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 the one they did at Slammiversary, those guys, you know, uh, that was an incredible match. Um, you know, I think my only criticism is I think early on we started doing too many of them uh, and that kind of takes the uh, allure away. But in the last several years, they've been very, very good about making that match mean something and making it special uh, because it should be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So another cool thing, uh, I do the podcast. I do uh, one of a kind with RVD. I do his podcast with them. And um, he was mentioning how he got very close to uh, joining Killer Kowalski school when he first started. And uh, he, he talked about how he learned a lot, you know, the, being stiff and like, you know, defending your honor kind of stuff like that with the Sheik. I wanted to kind of get, I think it's fascinating that you were trained by Killer Kowalski too. And you're, you've been able to adapt and to modernize yourself and kind of carry on his legacy in a lot of ways too, in a really, really cool way. Um, so basically what I wanted to ask, what's the biggest thing in or out of the ring that you learned from him? And then what's something modern that something that modern wrestling could really adapt from his teaching too. Well, you know, one thing he <laughs> got so much, you know, that's, that's so much I learned from him and not only just in wrestling, but about life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I remember being one of the first days and saying, believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. Yeah. He said, especially in this business. And I'm like, boy, 25 years later, was he right? <laughs> he right. Um, you know, so much, you know, like uh, I, you know, I, again, I, will always credit Walter Killer Kowalski for everything. Um, I find that uh, a lot of times those pioneers, we're starting to forget them a little bit more and more. Uh, you know, Walter is trained by Luthez. Uh, mm -hmm. Lu Luthez, one of the founding fathers of the industry of modern wrestling. And so to have, you know, Luth I, you know, Luthez has the, you know, his fingerprints on Walter who has his fingerprints on me and, you know, on Matt Bloom, who's running NXT and Triple H, obviously. So, like, that from a personal level is really cool to see Walter's influence so widespread now. But, you know, 
when you look at Walter's matches, Kowalski's matches, he was, you know, very much a brawler and very much just a big, mean, aggressive heel. What people didn't see is just his technique. Like he was so big on fundamentals and, um, you know, having respect for those fundamentals. Uh, you know, there was, there was a time when I was there where you didn't get in the ring until you knew how to wrestle until you knew the holds, the counter holds, like you weren't even hitting the ropes until you knew what you were doing. Uh, you know, and a lot of times nowadays it's, that isn't stressed enough early on in the training of, of young men and women. Um, and even, you know, guys that have been in for a while, they just, you know, they, they focus on acrobatics and things that are also very cool, but, you know, without a good foundation, you know, your house is going to crumble. So Walter was so, so much a stickler for technique and for fundamentals and for, aggressiveness and for you know treating this you know he would always say work but think shoot you know he mm-hmm. would tr- treat this business like a shoot those of us that were lucky you know i don't know lucky or unlucky he'd pull us in the little weight room in that old school and he would show us all these uh you know tricks little shoot fight tricks because you know in his day he had you know he had guys going to business for themselves and you know take advantage because it was a it was the wild west back then so you know he showed us how to protect ourselves and and yeah, he was, he was really, you know, just big on respect. And, uh, it, I, I actually heard that clip of Rob saying that, and, uh, that's cool. I think I knew that, but Rob is a huge influence on me. A huge Rob Van Dam guy, you know, lucky enough now to be friends with him and to have the opportunity to, to have wrestled him uh, numerous times. And that's really cool, man. It's just kind of, it's full circle stuff. How that's what it? I love about this business, man. Yeah he's yeah he's, he's one of a kind for sure <laughs> he's like literally yeah right <laughs> so yeah. you can't beat it and no yeah. he he spoke very highly of you two on there so that's cool man yeah, yeah. i love rob yeah. oh he's great um let me anybody in impact you think kowalski would have really liked to train that you're like oh man this would have been a good kowalski guy if you were you know you behind the scenes <laughs> oh man i mean you got like i said you got well you got eddie uh-huh. Yep. Train, so, <laughs> that's true. Uh huh. Yep. You know, that's you know, who I'm not really seeing eye to eye with right now. But like, uh, you know, the respect for that guy will always be there because he's such a consummate pro and he's so, so damn good and has such a high wrestling IQ. Um, you know, I, again, I look at, I'm talking about guys who I'm fans of personally. I look at a kid like Kevin Knight and, um, you know, he, uh, on top of being an amazing athlete and a very, very, very good wrestler, uh, he's a very grounded, nice kid who gets it and wants to learn and wants to get better. Um, I could see, you know, Walter looking at him and just looking at his raw talent and his athletic ability and, you know, really being able to sink his teeth into someone like that. Um, you know, because that was Walter's specialty, you know, seeing someone that was naturally gifted and then just, you know, pushing them and just really focusing on their, on their, on their strengths and getting rid of those weaknesses. I think that'd be a guy that he would, he would, um, love to mentor and train. How about that? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. man. I know it's, that's what's cool about Impact is like the diverse locker room and all these different styles and looks and appearances and things like that. You guys really cater to a lot of different um, fandoms, I think, of wrestling and stuff like that. Um, what's the locker room dynamic kind of been for you being back and, and being in that element again? And what's been different? What's been very cool that's been a big highlight for you? Again, you know, I'm not just saying this because I'm there. It's the it's the most positive um uh, locker room I've been a part of in my career. Uh, I really, really is a team. Uh, every, every, every man or woman wants the company to succeed. They want to take impact and, you know, elevate it. Uh, you know, there's, there's nobody that's selfish in there. Uh, everybody is a professional. Uh, everybody gets along. It's such a fun environment to go to work. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. And like you said, you got your mix of styles and styles makes fights. Uh, you got your veterans, you like myself and Alex Shelley and, uh, Chris Saban and Edwards and, you know, and then you got, you know, like, you know, your ace and Bay and your rich swans and Sammy Callahan's. And a lot of these guys are, are kids that grew up watching impact, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Cause you know, they, you know, uh, they, uh, because of that, they have a passion for this product. You know, they, these are guys that didn't want to be wrestlers they want to be tna wrestlers or impact wrestlers so you know they all take it very seriously and they want to do their best to make the company grow so uh it, it's it's really cool man i've had i've had such a blast the last eight months being back um and it just it's o- only looking bigger and better man 
Yeah, it totally is. It's such yeah. a good product and it's like week in and week out, very consistent and very well told yeah. stories and stuff. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. So I wanted to touch before we go a little bit of baseball. All uh, right. So the angels, is there any chance that they keep Otani? Uh, I, you know, being the die hard bleeding heart angel fan that I am, I hope to God there is uh you know, it, it, pundits would say no. Pundits mm -hmm. would say he's gone. He wants to win. The Angels aren't, you know, doing anything to better their situation, even though they went all in. They spent a lot of money at the trade deadline. Um, and I, I can't I can't argue with it because the Angels are not producing results right now. We're also very snake bit with injuries and bad luck. Um, and we have been for several years. And we've not really improved our pitching situation in a decade. Uh, having said that, though, you know, there. I, I do know that Otani does like playing in in Anaheim. I mean, he's he's kind of given free reign to kind of do his own thing. I don't know if he's going to get that luxury anywhere else. Um, I, I I could see him going to the Dodgers. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, as long as he doesn't go to the Yankees, uh, <laughs> I'm fine with that. You know, but like, look at I I, I will always be an Otani fan. Mm -hmm. um, the guy is special. I'm so glad my son gets to grow up watching him play because he's doing things right now. I mean, statistically, any baseball fan will tell you haven't been done since Babe Ruth, but he's taken that to another level. Yes. You know, like like Babe, people don't realize Babe Ruth only had a very short window of this, and Otani's shattering all the records that Babe, the greatest baseball player to ever live, that he created. Um, so yeah, man, I'll always look at I'll I'll always be an Angel fan, no matter how rotten they play. Uh, but you know, like I'll always be a Mike Trout and an Otani fan, you know, because they're just good for the game of baseball, and I'm a baseball fan. Well, yeah. So I also wanted before we go, I wanted to just ask too. I don't know the lay of the LA out. So how did you become an Angels fan? And then you're a generation before me. So what were some of your favorite players growing up too? Yeah. So you know, growing up, um, the Angels played their spring training games in Palm Springs, and that's you know 20 minutes from me. So I was fortunate enough. My my parents would take us to God 10, 15 spring training games every year. I got to sit and watch the guys take batting practice. You know, back then I was, uh, you know, I was an Angel fan, a Dodger fan, and a kind of an A's fan because my favorite player was Jose Canseco. Oh, nice. Uh, so I love I love the Bash Bros. I love Canseco McGuire. But, you know, but I also loved, you know, Oral Hershiser and Fernando and Kurt Gibson and Mike Sosha. And, you know, and the Angels, in terms of early Angels, I liked, you know, obviously Wally Joyner, who came in in 86, uh, a big fan of him. Uh, you know, Bobby Gritch, Doug DeSensei's, Jim Abbott. People don't remember Jim Abbott. The uh, yeah, one handed. Yeah. One handed pitcher, uh, you know, and then going up to, you know, the the the, the World Series team and, you know, Erstad Nextine and Scott Spezio and Tim Salmon and JT Snow and, you know, Chili Davis, Devon White, Rod Carew back in the day. Rod Carew's my dad's favorite player. Uh, you know, some of those guys, you know, just, especially this is back in a time where players stayed on a team for a lot longer than they do now, you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the era of free agency. Um, yeah, you know, I've, I've been on board the whole time, you know, I've, like I said, I've seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows and, uh, I'm just an angel fan and a baseball fan. And it's, um, I, I just really, it's really a lot more exciting when your team is doing well, especially this <laughs> time of year, man, you know, it is, I don't yeah. feel too bad because I'm a pirates fan and then I'm a Cardinals fan and I, I grew okay. up a Yankees fan. So I'm all over the grid. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean the pirates, I mean, I'm happy for them, you know, cause they, yeah. they had, they had some. It's a rough years. Oh, they you know, did. Oh my real God. rough yeah. years. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, it's cool. And I, I always like that in any sport, you know, I, I, as cool as dynasties are, I think it gets a bit redundant and it get a bit boring when, you know, it's constantly in the same team representing the American league or the national league in the, you know, in the series or the same with the super bowl. Uh, you know, I like it when it's just different every year, you know, when you just, you don't, you know, when the season starts, you don't know what's going to happen. I think that's good for, for baseball and football, whatever the sport may be. Parody is always great, man. It's always right, great. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Anything else you want to plug before we go? Hey, man, just Impact Wrestling every Thursday. Uh, you know, if, if those who, you know, maybe aren't watching Impact for whatever reason, um, I say give it a chance. Dude, honest to God, we're producing the best pro wrestling in the world right now. Um, our pay-per-views are uh, – can't miss uh, some of the – uh, I think every pay-per-view we've done, every big event we've done has knocked it out of the park this year. Uh, so if you're, if, you know, if you're on board, cool. If you're not, give it a shot. I think you'll love it. Uh, and just keep watching that. Keep supporting it. Keep supporting indie wrestling, man. You know, that's, that's the lifeblood of our business. You know, um, 
you know, there's always going to be big companies. There's always going to be WWEs and impact wrestlings, but you know, that's where we all started. Every one of us. So uh, go out and support your, you know, go to an armory, go to a state fair, support indie wrestling too, man. Absolutely. hundred percent. Well, cool. Frankie, thank you so much for joining us today on ad free shows and thank you all for tuning in. We'll see thank you. you. Appreciate time. you. Yeah. Thank